Welcome back to World News Today with me, Jonathan Charles. So, how much does a cup of coffee cost? Well, more and more of us are willing to pay $3 or even more for a steaming mug full in Starbucks or one of the other fast-expanding chains of cafes. A new film alleges that whilst profits for the multinationals are rising, not everyone is benefiting. The price paid to growers has fallen to such an extent that farmers in some of the world's poorest countries are forced to abandon their crops. Coffee's history dates back more than 2,000 years to Ethiopia. It's now the world's second most traded commodity after oil. The biggest growers are Brazil and Vietnam. By 2010, it's estimated that 7 million tonnes will be produced. The US and EU account for 70% of the world's coffee consumption. Well, just how fair is the coffee industry? The new film I mentioned is Black Gold. It's one of the movies on offer at the London Film Festival, which begins today. And it takes us from the coffee fields of Ethiopia to the commodity exchanges and fashionable cafes of New York and London. I'm joined by the filmmakers, Mark and Nick Francis, and from one of the biggest coffee manufacturers, Kraft, by Jonathan Horrell. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Uh, let's take a look, first of all, at a clip from the film. It's amazing, yeah? All coffees are here, but ours is not. No Ethiopian coffee at all. I'm very sad because I'm looking at just, it reminds me my farmers. They are, they are desperate and they are getting a very low price. They are get, their dairy income is very, very low. Now there we're seeing uh, one of the farmers, you've brought over an Ethiopian coffee man uh, to London, to a supermarket, to have a look for his product, uh, Mark and Nick Francis. So what point are you making by taking him around that supermarket? Well, that was part of the journey in the film when Tedese is actually in London in order to meet buyers to try and get a better price for his coffee and to see what the market looks like. And as an Ethiopian coffee producer, he gets a sense at that consumer shelf that, in fact, who, who are the real winners and losers of the coffee industry? And in the case of Ethiopia, struggling to find his own, any kind of sense of an Ethiopian coffee blend, he is, in fact, easily the loser. Jonathan Horrell from Kraft is a very emotive subject, obviously, and uh, very emotive in this film. The basic line is, bad deal for farmers. Uh, companies like yours make a lot of money. Well, we share, actually, the, the concerns that are expressed in the film because uh, it's a great worry to us that farmers across the world, and these problems that uh, we see in the film in Ethiopia are shared in many other countries. Uh, when you talk to farmers in many countries, they give you the same concerns. And it's a great worry to us as a coffee producer um, if the farmers that supply the product that we depend on uh, are not sustainable. I was staggered in the film. There was one little section where you see uh, the man we've, we've just seen in the supermarket talking to coffee growers and pointing out that they get a few cents for a kilo of coffee, uh, which is then sold to make 80 cups of coffee, earns hundreds of dollars for the coffee shops. I bought a quarter of a kilo of coffee in the shop the other day. Coffee beans cost me something like three pounds, about five or six dollars. Uh, the disparity between what the poor farmers are getting, a few cents, and the money that is being charged to consumers in the shops. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I don't know what the rent is, for example, on a coffee shop in a central London high street, uh, but obviously it illustrates that there are a huge number of costs between buying the coffee on, off the farm uh, and selling it to the consumer, be that uh, in, in the supermarket or in a coffee shop. But really the important question is, can the farmer make a profit uh, from, what he, from what he produces? And the testimony of some of the farmers in the film, I think, is very worrying in the sense that they, they say they can't make profits. Um, and also, many of them say they don't actually have adequate information available to them uh, to access the correct market price. These are precisely the sorts of, uh, sorts of problems that we're seeking to address through our sustainability work. Isn't that the point, Mark and Nick Francis, uh, as filmmakers? It's not simple. Uh, yes, they may not be getting much money, but the reason it costs much more to sell these products in the West is there is a chain that it has to go to before it comes to our coffee cups. I think you're right, but I think the central question is coffee is one of those industries which really exposes the kind of gap in who's winning in the globalized economy. And take the case of Kraft, um, who I think last year, 2005, made $4.7 billion out of coffee. So, and when you go to the countries which are supplying uh, coffee to companies like Kraft, they're in an absolute crisis. They are dependent on food aid, and they're dependent on the very things which they needn't be if they're being paid above the cost of production. And I think that's really the question. When you talk to coffee farmers, they don't want charity. They want to be paid a basic wage, which guarantees them 
uh, price above the cost of production. That's the central issue. And coffee companies seem to be very reluctant to do that. Well, but how do you get to that point? We, uh, that we can see the problem, but how do you get to that solution? I think it's just simply a paradigm shift in the mindset of corporations to say, do we value the people who prop up our turnover to the tune of billions of dollars, or do we simply see them as you know, a sideshow? And I think as soon as they become more integral to the thinking of corporations and corporate thinking, will there be a change? And what that doesn't mean is initiatives which use language of sustainable development, right. which actually all this, doesn't, all this, all this not mainstream. change of mindset, Jonathan Horrell. Uh, it's not in our interest at all to have low prices and coffee farmers in crisis because that hurts quality and it hurts security of supply. Precisely what we're trying to do, we've been in coffee 100 years and we want to be in it for the next 100. So precisely what we're trying to do is work on schemes uh, with certification programs, which are often highlighted by organizations that work in this, uh, like the Rainforest Alliance. And I'm pleased to say that we've just bought the first Rainforest Alliance certified coffee out of Ethiopia. We use it in some of our product branding now. Uh, it, we've got brands launched uh, uh, certified by the Rainforest Alliance in four European markets and in the States as well. And through initiatives like this, we're seeking directly to improve the sustainability of the farms. With respect, though, a few that, seconds. With yep. respect, that's got no impact on the pricing that farmers get paid. And that's the crucial issue that all farmers, all 25 all right. million, want you, to you've know. You've got five seconds to answer that. Uh, the, fa the farmers get more efficient, they get a higher price, uh, and, it, and, in, and I've seen the benefits myself. Uh, it really makes a difference. All right, very complex subject. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed.